What's going on, guys? Zuko back with another War Within video. Hope you're all doing really well. We're finally going to talk about Rogue. We're finally going to talk about Rogue, and this is Outlaw Rogue in particular. I know I know what you're saying. Zuko, what the heck took you so long? Why did you wait so long to do Rogue? And you know what? It's because it makes me sad, all right? That's why. Because whenever I play this thing and try to do damage, I get beat by an Ogvoker or something, or the tank. And it takes a part of my soul and it just it just crumples into a little ball and it, it destroys it, all right? And it hurts. And I want this thing to be good and it is, it is kind of good. It's kind of good, but it's also not. And we're gonna talk about that. <coughs> Listen, I have been trying a whole bunch of different like setups here, variations, yada, yada. This is the build that I've settled on for now. Let's just give me a big TLDR out of the way. This needs to get buffed. Okay, Blizzard, please. If any of you are looking at this, this is just criminally... These numbers are criminally low. It's so bad. Like, this unseen blade thing from Trickster does 66,000 damage. Okay? If I was to switch to Red Paladin and look at what Red Paladin gets for... Templar, let's say. The Templar ability does like 250,000 damage to all nearby enemies. It's like not, it's ridiculous. Not even close. Obviously, I can blade flurry stuff. I get it. We'll talk about that in a minute. Here's the build that I've kind of settled on for Outlaw Rogue. Okay. Unfortunately, the best build appears to be probably the one that you're already running in Dragonfly, from what I can see. Okay. All the like actual outlaw stuff like green skin whiskers and maybe like ghostly strike um they're like garbage like they're terrible all the stuff that has to do with your actual kit as an outlaw rogue like pistol shot is garbage okay you have to basically go and take the stealth stuff you have to be pressing ambush all the time you're hoping for ambush procs all the time um, from Audacity, and you're and you're hoping that it's going to strike twice with hidden opportunity, just like your sinister strike would. You're hoping, uh, and then you're doing your like really cool crack shot windows. I understand how this works now, and I think it's very very cool. I like it a lot, but it doesn't feel like an outlaw rogue to me, and this has been my huge problem with this. It feels like I'm playing half of a sub rogue, and it feels worse, and like I don't like that. I really hate that they added this stuff in. And I especially hate that it's the best build. By far. It's like not even close. <clears throat> that being said. Let's try to scrap together a build here with Trickster as our tree. I did try Fatebound on stream last night. And we all wanted to cry collectively. So that's how you, that's how that's how good that is I, like you're literally just flipping coins you don't even know what they're doing you're not sure if you're flipping heads or tails twice or no yeah there's some deterministic bit of it you can flip a coin twice after stealth you can flip a coin twice after adrenaline rush and it's like okay but like once i flip seven coins the same way in a row and i get my cool faithful ending what happens oh i get one percent agility one percent haste crit versus mastery one percent tertiary that what the heck is that what is that? I don't even want to talk about it. Let's talk about Trickster. <clears throat> Here's the build. You have to take Killing Spree because there is about three talents that interact with Killing Spree on Trickster. Okay, number one, your Unseen Blade and Killing Spree increases the damage of your finishing moves by for six seconds. That's really cool. Killing Spree applies Phase. That's the debuff that you put on enemies whenever you hit them with an Unseen Blade. Okay. Which now this got changed from it used to be faint. Uh, now it's not faint anymore, proccing an unseen blade. It's sinister strike, which procs an unseen blade. However, look at the bottom line. This effect may occur only once every 20 seconds. Like, why? It's 66,000 damage. I think my holy paladin could do more damage than that. Like, I don't even get it. Why is there an internal cooldown on this? I don't understand. Anyway, the point is your sinister strike has a chance. Uh, they, they are guaranteed to strike with an unseen blade, but only once every 20 seconds. Now, you can game this by having a sinister strike hit and then getting an ambush proc and then having an ambush strike hit, and that's good. That's, that's actually kind of cool, okay? And then Killing Spree applies the phase debuff 
no matter what. You don't even have to hit with an unseen blade. It just does it. So this makes you do 5% more damage to everybody, which is pretty good, and they can't parry your attack. So Killing Spree is pretty essential. And then there's this Killing Spree has reduced cooldown, and it allows your next two strikes of unseen blade to ignore its cooldown. So again, there's an internal cooldown of 20 seconds. Once you throw Killing Spree out, your next two sinister strikes just ignore the internal cooldown and they apply an unseen blade then there's the final thing here the coup de gras when you apply four unseen blades your next dispatch will be a coup de gras functioning as if it had consumed four additional combo points that's pretty cool you can get one two three four five six seven combo points plus four so we're talking eleven you're gonna have it you're gonna hit a dispatch if you're at full combo points and you press it it's an eleven point dispatch okay that sounds really cool. It sounds like it should be good. The coup de gras sucks. It doesn't look like it does anything. It like it's also like a channeled attack. It takes like one and a half GCDs to fully channel. So you're like stuck in this weird animation where it's like channeling the coup de gras, and you can't even really tell if it's doing a lot of damage or not. There's no special animation for it. It just like mind controls your character for one and a half seconds, and you're like. Am I doing it? Did I do it? Did, is it, is it, did my numbers go up? I don't really know. So you have to take Killing Spree. That's actually okay. Believe it or not, when you press Blade Flurry into Killing Spree, it does a buttload of damage. Okay, it really does. And you have a slight defensive layer where 100% of the damage that you take during Killing Spree is instead delayed. whoop de doo Super cool. This is kind of the build that you're working on, okay? Let me just show you on the dummies really quickly, and then I will get into the footage. I don't want to be here too long, but I just need to, like, stress how kind of bad this is. It's it's really frustrating, okay? Let's look at the current segment here. Again, this is all about crack shot. Your entire build is about going back into stealth and hitting as many between the eyes as you can and really, really hoping that you get an ace up your sleeve proc that you can reset and immediately press between the eyes again and again and again you know you know if you play it you know what i'm talking about this is what it's going to kind of look like so here we go we'll do a uh there we go this and then we're going to go blade flurry into a between the eyes adrenaline rush between the eyes so i got three of them off there oops i don't know why i did that okay then we're doing a bit of damage then we're going to go into our vanish our first vanish window Pra between the eyes, there we go we got a reset between the eyes between the eyes again. We got a reset between the eyes. Between the eyes again. You see what happens? Sometimes you can get a bunch of resets, which is really cool. And I definitely like that. Now we'll do a killing spree because we have Blade Flurry up. Okay. And then we're going to go back into our next vanish window. Between the eyes. Blade Flurry. Between the eyes. Between the eyes again. Between the eyes again. Okay. That was pretty cool. Between the eyes. Okay. And then now we're out of our window. So we got to chill. Okay. So this is kind of what it looks like. And it's good. It's good. It's very reliant on that vanish window. You're not really an outlaw rogue anymore. There's my coup de gras. Do you see that? I got to show you that again. It's really weird, man. Um, okay, here comes our vanish window again. We're going to drink some tea. We're going to um, we're gonna do a killing spree first just to get it on cooldown so we can refresh it. Okay, now we'll go vanish into between the eyes. Between the eyes. We didn't get a reset. Okay, between the eyes. Didn't get a reset. Unlucky. Back to adrenaline rush. Okay, let me show you what a coup de gras looks like this is kind of what the damage looks like it's actually pretty good um let's until we need to get a uh, dispatch here let me uh see how many we get try and get a uh coup de gras this is how long it could take to build up by the way we're just not getting a coup de gras as uh you know okay we finally got one here's what it looks like you ready you watching watch all my my watch all my abilities they're gonna disappear while i'm doing this ready i press it Everything goes blank for one and a half seconds. I can't do anything. What is that garbage? I don't understand. Let's get into the footage because... Uh, oops, I didn't have this open yet. Because this can do damage, okay? It can. I just... It, it just doesn't do enough, okay? It really doesn't do enough. That's the bottom line. It just truly doesn't. You're comparing this to like fire mages right now and rep paladins and warlocks and these warlocks weren't playing particularly well i don't think our damage is okay though here so i'm opening up i'm in my little stealth window from stealth that's the best part about it then i'm gonna go into my vanish now i'm doing crack shot stuff here we go so i'm doing between the eyes i should have done another blade flurry between the eyes okay i do a killing spree look at my damage go up with killing spree it's actually not oh we got feared in the middle of it never mind our damage went down but like we we're doing five to six hundred to seven hundred k. It's not bad. 
but like I'm sweating so hard trying to do my damage. There's perspiration flowing down my face and I'm pressing vanish and I'm pressing between the eyes and I'm blade flurry and make sure my slicing dice is up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna I got an ambush proc, I gotta press it, I gotta refresh my roll to bones and I gotta make sure I'm hitting between the eyes because I'm in my stealth window and there's a friggin' Destro lock sitting behind me pressing rain of fire with one finger, okay? One finger on Reign of Fire. Meh. Meh. And he's doing double my damage. Ugh. Let's try the next pack. Roll the bones are going. Okay. We are in a stealth window. We do out between the eyes. Between the eyes. Between the eyes. We got three of them off. Cool. We're doing damage. Look at that. Whoa. Actually doing some damage. This is like the most damage I think I did in the entire dungeon. Kind of popping off. Okay. By the way, the reason crack shot is really good, which is the between the eyes and stealth thing that I keep talking about, it also dispatches the enemy. Now, unfortunately, if you have a coup de gras dispatch ready to go, that super special dispatch that just channels your mind controls your character, it won't proc that dispatch when you use your crack shot between the eyes where you're like in stealth. It doesn't consume the super the super dispatch. It won't do it. So I don't know why. That seems like that could be a cool idea. I tried to get this fear at the last second. I didn't. I, I didn't. Don't even worry about it. But the point is, we did some damage here, okay? Blade Flurry's up. We get the between the eyes. Look at our damage there. Boom. It hits hard. You get those resets. You hear that little lock and the cha ching, that little uh, reload that you get. That's when you get a proc on between the eyes. It feels good. It actually feels okay. Now. <clears throat> One thing I will say really quickly, our item level is capped here. This is not a mythic dungeon. So we're capped at like 567 item level instead of 580 item level. I literally couldn't get into a mythic dungeon. I'm, I'm dead serious. I was getting like censored because I was a rogue on the beta already. People are like figuring out meta comps. It drives me crazy. Anyway, I had to join a heroic dungeon. So our, our numbers will probably be a little bit lower anyway because we're not at 580 item level, okay? Here's our single target damage on Edna. There's my coup de gras. Takes over my character. Love it. Absolutely love it. And then our damage just goes in the actual toilet. Like, I don't know what is going on with single target. I should have just pressed killing spree a long time ago. I think I was scared of uh, running into, like, a boulder. So there, we got killing uh, spree going. And uh, now we're into our, our stealth window. Okay, so there we got a reset. We got one, two resets, maybe, on between the eyes. That's not bad. Our damage went up a little bit. Kind of, sort of, maybe. Killing Spree's back. I should be pressing that a lot more often. That's one big problem, I guess. I'm not pressing Killing Machine enough, uh, Killing Spree enough. But to be honest, on this boss fight, it's a liability. Like, I'm pressing it right now, and I could I could be sending this flame towards one of my allies. Every time I jump around, I move that arrow where the flame's going to go, and I can literally one-shot, like, my healer. So it's actually, like, a complete liability. It's crazy. It's, it's pretty dumb. Anyway, Edna down. Not much to talk about there. Edna's a really difficult boss fight on Mythic, so on Heroic, you don't really get a good sense of, like, how difficult she is. I jumped in this pack, and now I'm dying. I don't know why. I think I'm doing damage somehow. There, I got a reset on the, uh, between the eyes. Okay, now we're out. Now we're dying. I pop faint, and I cloak at the very end here. I should have cloaked earlier. I cloak with, like, 10 health left. And then I grab some more mobs to kill because I'm stupid. So anyway, we jump back in. It doesn't matter. Well, that fight's over. Let's start. Let's do an actual fight here. Here we go. This, uh, between the eyes. Remember, when you're coming out of stealth, for like three seconds after being in stealth, you um, retain stealth abilities. So your between the eyes will reset itself because of subterfuge. Subterfuge, right? So very, very good. Here comes a uh, blade flurry into a killing spree. Boom, boom, boom. Look at my damage go up. Pretty good, actually, right? Look at that. Really quickly here. Really quick, one more time. Blade Flurry. Okay, into killing. I'm doing 343,000 damage per second. And then we go boom, 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 up to 400. Like, we got 100k DPS right there from Killing Spree when it's got Blade Flurry on it, okay? It's no joke. It actually hits pretty hard, especially in the AoE environment with Blade Flurry. So... But <laughs> look at the nut, look at the dot, look at the damage. We're still not doing any damage! Like, it was cool... But it needs to do, like, 3x more damage. Do you know what I mean? Rain of fire. How do I press this harder? How do I press rain of fire harder? Mm, press it! Anyway. 
I've been trying to test this for a long time. I'm really tired and I'm sad. I've spent an enormous amount of time trying to make Rogue great again. We're trying to make Rogue great again and it's it's struggling. It's resisting. Rogue is resisting. It doesn't want to be great. I don't know what the problem is, but it ain't it ain't buying it. Couple resets there. Pretty good. Good opener. Couple resets on uh, uh between the eyes. Very nice. Back to blade flurry. We're going. This is not bad DPS. Two target cleave, 400 k I'll take it. I'll take it. We're getting a good amount of damage here. We just did a coup de gras. Did anybody see that? You missed it, didn't you? You missed my coup de gras because you have it doesn't even what is happening when I press this button? Look, it's lit up. Ooh, it's lit up. Let's press it. Okay. I built some more combo points. I press this on full combo points. That's an 11 point spender. How much damage did it do? I'm doing almost 6 million right now. What happens here? Oh, I go to 6.5 million. It did 500,000 damage. Is that what you're telling me right now? My 11 point Dispatch did 500k hitting two targets. They need to buff this. It's, it's just like, it's actually like unacceptable. It's insane. I, I don't even understand what's happening. It's so crazy. I like, am I missing? I must be missing or something, right? Am I missing my coup de gras? It's just missing, right? I go to like stab the guy with this huge 11 point spender dagger or sword and he's like whoop he just gets out of the way i don't know two target cleave boss fight pretty good um our sustain here is quite good we have like cloak and faint like rogue is really good for this right um everybody else kind of ends up dying on this fight i think except for me this fight's awesome i love this dungeon to be awesome this is in season one by the way the stone vault is in season one so i think you should get excited about that because this dungeon is a lot of fun everybody's gonna die on edna repeatedly it's gonna be great here comes killing spree boom 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 damage goes up by 12 nice awesome okay we keep going we're doing damage I, like, i'm doing my best guys maybe i am complete and utter dog water at this i don't know maybe i'm really bad like i could be very bad that might be part of the problem but i don't think i'm that bad at outlaw rogue i think i'm like i don't know 80 percent there or something maybe a bit better like i'm not playing that poorly i don't think please let me know in the comments down below if you think i'm just playing really really badly because I, I just feel like this needs so much help it's crazy dude Oh, uh, we cloak this. Yeah, we're alive. We're good. Doing big damage. But I'm... What am I stunned? What happened to me? I guess, okay, here we go. Killing killing spree. Killing spree with blade uh, flurry. The TLDR for this entire video is killing spree with blade flurry is good. That's it. That's the whole TLDR. Everything else is not good. Here's what really gets me. Why does ambush do like 75,000 damage and sinister strike does... 35,000 damage. Why is my signature ability at the top of my talent tree doing half the damage that a class ability is doing? Like, every rogue has ambush. We all have it. It's a baseline ability. It's doing double the damage that my Sinister Strike is doing. Like, I just... Like, why? Why is that a thing in this game? Like, why? Who coded that? And thought mm, this is a great idea like that really confuses me because um it just shouldn't be that way i think outlaw rogue should be the one rogue spec that just really doesn't need stealth almost at all except for maybe like your opener i get it rogues are stealth i get it but my point is this is the swashbuckling pirate rogue it's a pirate rogue you think he's gonna be dipping into the shadows to stab you with an ambush no man he's gonna get right in your face and punch you in the face and s stab you with a with a sword over here and i don't know like he, he's gonna be like up in your business and it's like we have to skulk in the shadows like a sub rogue but we're like half a sub rogue right we're like a discounted sub rogue at like dollarama or something i don't get it i don't get the design why not just go all in on the pirate make it real like give us like double pistols to just blast people away i don't know just make it better. Yeah, here's the next boss. This here's the next boss. This is uh for Scar Skarkmorak. Skarkmorak. Um single target damage. It's, it's it's a struggle. It's a struggle. 
all the struggle. I know I've been complaining a lot. I do apologize. Um, I've just been, I've just spent like, I don't know. I spent like six or eight hours working on this thing, uh, on the stream, off the stream, trying to make it work, trying to figure out what the best build is. And it just, it's just so criminally undertuned, brother. You know what it is? I know everything might, is, is going to change because it's beta. I get that, but it's a little bit worrying. Blizzard has a track record of like getting into beta and saying, okay, guys, now we're going to get into the tuning phase and we're going to start, um, we're really going to start, you know, tuning all these specs that are bad. And then the ones that are really good, we're going to bring them down. And it's like, then they just don't really do as much tuning as you expect. And the specs that are really in the dumps, they kind of stay close to the dumps. And the specs that are really overpowered, they just come down off the mountain like a little bit. But you're still, it's it's still basically the same thing. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think that of all the specs that I've tried, I have tried like almost every spec in the game right now on stream over the past week. Like both Evokers and Unholy DK and Frost DK and F Fury Warrior and Arms Warrior and... Um, I haven't really tried Mage, but we all know Mages are really good. Um... You know, I, I, I've done the Hunters. I've done all three Hunters. They're better. Except for maybe BM Hunter, I guess. But I've done a lot of testing of a lot of other specs. And, 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 and they, they come in at a certain level. I'm expecting to get my DPS to a certain level on every spec. Some of them are, like, above that. Like, Survival Hunter now or, like, Rep Powder Fire Mage. They're, like, quite a ways above that. Maybe Warlock. Some of them are just slightly under this level that I'm expecting, which might be like Ellie Shaman, for example, could use like a, a slight tweak up to make it really good. Or like not everything on Ellie Shaman's working right now as well. But this rogue is like down here. It's like 50% to 60% worse than what my baseline expectation is for like everybody. That's how bad it is. I'm serious. Um, it's just it's just really bad. Let's get to Ideric. High speaker Ideric. Uh, this boss fight's pretty cool. There's two portals here. There's more portals that are going to spawn throughout this encounter. When you get a damage over time debuff put on you, you're going to want to run to this portal. You don't want to run to this portal without that debuff. You can see me getting sucked in to the portal there. If you stand too close, you will get sucked in to the portal and die. We all have a debuff on us now. You want to run these debuffs to the portals. That's the, that's the majority of this fight. The floor will also fill up with these circles, and you got to be careful where you're placing them. We weren't really careful. I cloaked mine. Just so you know, as a rogue, you can cloak it, and the circle actually won't even go on the ground, which is actually kind of cool. This room will gradually fill up on tyrannical weeks. It's going to be a pretty cool fight, actually. Um, you're, the floor is going to get very, very busy. You're going to have to stack these um, in, in the same spot, basically, over and over again if you can. So anyway, it's a cool fight. It's a cool fight, but it's this is just sort of a heroic dungeon, so... Let's look at our overall, and I'll look at the numbers really quickly here, and let's do kind of an assessment of where we're at. So, the numbers overall in the dungeon were basically 353k. Again, this is about 100 to 150k less DPS than what I am, what is pretty normal. Now, again, our item level was capped at 567, I think. So it wasn't 580. We were 13 item levels lower than the 580 that a lot of people are doing. But, you know, that's not going to make up uh, 150k DPS. That might give you another 50k DPS. So let's call it 400k. It's still very, very bad. It's very, very behind. And the other thing is that I have no real idea what's going on with Trickster. I know I'm proccing Unseen Blades occasionally, but I don't really know when it's happening it's it's you can't the only way you can tell if you've actually done a few of them is if your coup de gras comes up and then your coup de gras is the most underwhelming spell in the entire game i don't even know that i'm pressing it so um they really need to work on these hero trees please blizzard please do some more iteration on these trees they really need some help especially like fatebound is just actually a crime it's so bad uh but trickster is pretty bad too so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i would love to hear from all of you especially you guys who play a lot rogue i did I miss something? Am I way off the mark? Or is this is this kind of kind of what you what makes sense given what you've seen on screen? I would love to hear from all of you down there. Uh, we really need to start like a petition to get Outlaw Rogue buffed because this is just really rough. It, they're really in the trenches right now, and we gotta get them buffed before release. So thank you so much for watching. I love you all. I will see you in the next one.